And I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want DAO partners. And you can be my DAO partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to DAOpartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make draw. So you can be our DAO partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming DAO partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a DAO partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hu Allah De Ija'alna Muslimin Masha Allah uh, Yes uh, oh, We're not unmuted yet Alright yes, now sir. There we go There we go Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen uh, Sister Kim Tell everybody what they're doing What's going on well, things are being really quiet over here in Yuma, Arizona, but I hear things are really starting to heat up in other parts of the country when it comes to COVID. And I can't see you on the screen on the broadcast or in Zoom. Well, I guess that's because I'm not there. And that's, oh, the, okay. that's the reason. And I have <laughs> no clue how to make it work because it indicates here that I'm on the air and uh, I can see the results of pushing a button, but I have no idea what to do next. Oh, no. Oh, well, yeah. we'll just have to put up a picture for yourself. Okay, that's a good idea. Uh, go ahead. Tell us about the, what's going on with the COVID now, if you can. Well where i am is actually doing quite well we are pretty uh level in new cases we are not a hot spot like we were last summer when we had the um oh yusha says you need to change the camera frame size oh okay all right go ahead uh, go ahead i'll work on that all right and um but I hear that places like Florida and Texas are definitely really blowing up. Um, and was reading a report, for example, in Houston, a young girl only 11 months old had severe COVID and um, they had to fly her um, over 250 miles to find a pediatric hospital that could take her. Some parts of Texas are shipping people out as far as Utah before they can find a hospital with room to take them. Whoa. So, um, the, you know, this is not a joke. The virus scare is not over. Um, and businesses are starting to ask people to mask up again. Several oh big box stores have rules now that their employees need to be masked and they're asking patrons to 
re-mask up, but they are not requiring it yet. But some of your smaller mom and pop stores are now requiring masks in their businesses. And they're asking everybody to respect that. They're only trying to keep everybody safe, including their employees, without whom they wouldn't have a business. And so, um, you know, if you're going out and about, especially if you're starting to feel a little ill, it, it, even if you've had the vaccine, it is possible for you to, co- to have COVID with the vaccine. Now, chances are you're not going to have it very severely. So it might just feel like you have a summer cold. Oh, so if you boy. feel like that, be sure that you're wearing a mask because even vaccinated people still carry the same viral load or amount of the virus in their bodies. And it can be given to those that are not vaccinated including children under 12, I can see you now, um, including children under 12 that um, are not eligible for the vaccine. So this is another time that we've all really got to pull together and do everything that we can to keep each other safe. Well, I think we found out the solution to, uh, if you can see me now on the screen. I can see you on Zoom. I'm waiting for you to come up on the show. All right. Well, anyway, I'll enjoy this coffee while that's happening. Okay, now I can see you. Oops. All right. Everybody, welcome to our program coming to you almost live from our studios right here in Southern California. And sleep at the switch, it would be me. Yeah. And, uh, but by the way, it'll only get worse for the next week or so because our manager and uh, acting technician at the same time, he will be out of pocket. So he told me that he's going to put it on automatic pilot. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Anyway, so <laughs> are we going to do it <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with that, but uh, anyway. It'll be an interesting couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, it actually, 10 or 11 days. Not quite two weeks, but uh, hey, who's counting? Anyway, I wanted to pick up where we left off last night. We were talking so much about the... Uh, the responses of Muslims uh, talking about the, the the changes that need to be implemented in order for us to bring ourselves up to the 21st century. And my rebuttal for that is that we don't need to make changes to the religion. However, the changes really are necessary within ourselves. And in order to do so, we have to begin by understanding who our Lord is, number one. And then uh, then it comes to us, af- after you understand who our Lord really is, and then understand our relationship to Him. And th- once that is in place, then everything else can be defined. But if we don't start with that, we'll wind up just like the other religions have turned from... By the way, according to us, all of the religion started with the law, according to us. But people redefined it. He defined it. He gave the definition right away. And then... We redefined it this way, that way, that way, far away, away, way, away. And we did all of that thinking that we were improving something. And you do not improve on perfection. Sister? Yeah, one thing that I'm very curious about is um, we know, for example, that Allah placed us on this earth to worship him and him alone. That's for true. new converts in the West, that can be very difficult as they're trying to balance their lives. 
unlike in Muslim dominated countries, we don't have the edicts where when the Adhan is called, everybody stops work and prays. Um, you know, and you know, just convincing your boss that it's time to pray can be very difficult. And, you know, like when I was employed and I said, I need my time to pray, they said, well, can't you do it on your break? And I said, I can, but, you know, my breaks fall in such a way that I would miss one of my prayers. And I finally got them to agree that I could take my break when I needed to in order to complete my prayers. But not everybody has that luxury. If we are to be an Allah mindful person in the West, how do we fit that into a Western lifestyle? Okay. That is a very good question and one that a lot of people, including myself, have when we first come into Islam. However, a closer look at what Islam really teaches is really needed, especially in these days and in these times. So, the, again, the problem is not Islam. The problem is our understanding of what Islam is. For instance, you brought up one of the critical issues in Islam that many people have left their job or left uh, their salah or, or making a choice, and this is not necessary. For instance, I'm going to ask you, and just be straight up with me, exactly when did you start your hour, you know, what time of the day did you start and what time did you end? Um, I had a flexible schedule, but the nights that it became difficult was during the summertime when I was working from six to midnight. And so um, the sunset prayer and the evening prayer, I did not have a break until they were both over. Okay, that's perfect. Now, let's hold on to that idea, what you said. Now let's look and explore what happens to the one who has his lunch break in the summertime at 12 o'clock. And he has it maybe even for a half hour or for a full hour, but the salad doesn't come in until 1 o'clock or even after 1 o'clock because of daylight saving time. What can he do? Hmm? Because he's got to go back to work. He already had his lunch break. And if he says, oh, I, 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 they'll say, okay, you don't want to work. No, I, I just need a break. No, no. You're going to get off at 5 o'clock. Oh, I already missed my prayer. Ah. Because at 5 o'clock, and then I get to my car, it's 5.30, whatever. And now it's time for us, sir. What can I do? Already, some of you who are watching this know the answer. But why not share this right now so that you can have many people see the answer? New Muslims need to know this. Non-Muslims need to know it so that they can help counsel with you. And then the born Muslims need to know it as well. As I said, maybe you already know. But just share this right now so everybody will know. The fact is, you can combine Asr and Dhuhr together. If you need to do so, you can combine them even though you're not a traveler. The difference is you cannot shorten the prayers from four rakah down to two as you would do if you're traveling. If the sun goes down and you're at work, you find yourself at work and you have to work until um, at least until midnight or even afterwards 
what can you possibly do? Because it's going to get dark, 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 dark city. <laughs> and what can you do? Again, you can combine the three rakah of Maghrib with the four rakah of Isha because there is a necessity. For any time there is a, a difficulty, Allah provides an uh, uh, out of necessity, of course, he provides what's called a ruksa or a concession. So when there is darura, there is ruksa. So when there is difficulty, there is a relief. The only thing in Islam that cannot be tolerated at all is the worship of another god beside Allah. That is the only breaking point, the only breaking deal. If you recite the Quran, you can go to recite Quran on on uh, on our website. It's called reciteQuran.com, and then uh, after you type reciteQuran.com, put the slash mark, then put the number four, then put a colon, and then put a number four, and then eight. 4 colon 4 a and that will take you right to the the uh, website for that and i think we have it up uh, yeah let's play it here it is <laughs> Listen to Indeed, the translation. Allah does not forgive association with him, but he forgives what is less than that for whom he wills. And he who associates others with Allah has certainly fabricated a tremendous sin. Okay, so let's let's Think about that for a minute. Allah is not going to forgive that making shirk or partners with Allah. Anything else he can forgive. Anything else he can forgive. And by the way, there's a hadith that needs to be explained right now. The hadith, it says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his companions, listen carefully and please share this. Please, please let people know this. That nobody, this is the quote, of course translated to English. Nobody will remain in the hellfire forever except those who refuse to leave. What is the question that comes in your mind immediately, Sister? Sister Kim? Well, the big question, of course, is why would anybody refuse to leave the hellfire? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> but the reason that he said it like this is to make it crystal clear the importance of accepting what he has mandated. Because, let me... Go back to the Quran, and uh, in Surah number three, I go by the numbers. I, you know, I have that Bible inclination thing. <laughs> but in verse nineteen, let's let's put this up and and give a listen to what this is all about. Hold on a second. It's taken its good sweet time to come up for it. And uh, okay, it's not going to come up. Uh, it says, in Nadina, in the Lahil Islam. Verily, the only way of life, some translate it as religion, the only way of life with Allah is the surrender and submission to Him on His terms. That's what Islam means. Okay? In Nadina, in the Lahil Islam. Deen, your way of life. Islam. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity or to Almighty God alone without partners. Okay? And then 
in um, in three chapter three verse eighty five, and again it will not come up. Ah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen for all of the cool things that are not happening. <laughs> it makes me have to work a little bit. All right, I don't mind. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Allah says, Wa mam yabtagi ghayrul islam adina fala yukmala bin hum wa huwa fil akirti min al khasirin. I blew it on the Arabic, but maybe I'll do better with the English. Allah says he will not accept he will not accept any other religion or way of life than the one that he has mandated. Now, in this life, in this life, you can go forward as much as you want in this direction, in that direction. You can do what you want to do. You can do it. And you will not be asked about it until the day of judgment. But then it is too late. And for those who understood the religion and tried to modify it or change it, that's exactly what this ayah is talking about. You want to change something? Go ahead. <laughs> Allah is not going to accept it. And in the hereafter, they will be mental Hasarin with the losers. I don't want to be a loser. Do you want to be a loser? Who would go to a racetrack and bet on a horse that they know is not even in the race? Now, we're not supposed to go to horse uh, races and bet, but who would do that? Who would bet on a number in a casino that is not even there? You get the idea. So what you're doing is putting your hopes on something that is not there. Don't change the way of Al-Islam. Don't do that. Find out what you need to know. Like sister asked a very good question. Who would refuse to leave? Ah, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, whoever hears about me and my message, talking about the Prophet and his message, and refuses to accept that, any part of it, they have refused to leave the hellfire. I hope I answered your question, sister. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. I think you already knew that though, right? <laughs> I knew that one. I did know that one. But it is a very important question because, you know, when Allah asks us or tells us, he does tell us what our responsibilities are as Muslims to him. And for anybody to say, well, that doesn't apply to me or that's old news and we're in a new century now or anything like that. They didn't come out with the Quran 2021 as opposed to the Quran that was given to the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. It all still applies. And we have to keep that in mind. Well, there's, an, there's another issue that I would like to compare this to that the changes within the Christian church and within the Christian gospel because I have been, I still study these things to know more about what really happened, what, what happened at the time of Jesus Christ, peace and blessing be upon him. Because we believe in him, we believe in his miracle birth, we believe in his miracles that he did, and we believe he's with Allah, and we believe he'll be back in the last day. If I don't believe that, I can't be a Muslim. However, what we don't believe is exactly what Allah says in the Quran. He says, and make no mistake about this, it says it clearly in the Quran. They did not kill him. And they did not cross him. The, the word uh, in uh, Arabic is uh, for crucifixion is uh, salib. They didn't salib him. They didn't do that. 
So that is the part that we know didn't happen. But what did happen is Allah took him up. So as except for that business of the cross, and of course not being a, a real son of God, he is a messenger of God, he is a servant of God, he's an abd of Almighty Allah. The, yeah, we go along with that 100% because it says that in the Quran. And he's he is no less than, but no more than, any of the other prophets, except that he's still alive. Yes. Only the devil is still alive from his birth and only uh, from the jinn. Now, he's uh, from the jinn. He's not from the humans, not from angels. So he's still alive and Jesus is still alive. But it doesn't mean that either one of them is a god. And I think uh, maybe you can... Uh, relate to some of those kind of teachings, sister, because you were in a religion where people had many gods, I think. Yes, and they were reborn every year. Um, and so the God leaving and coming back and everything like that is a common theme throughout paganism. That's, you know, there's, you know, um, stories about that from Egypt in um the ancient egyptian religion there is um evidence of that in um babylonian religions and in many european religions and faiths um all of which were pagan faiths and um in almost all of them one of the gods at least would die at some point in the case of Egypt they died every night and um and they would come back so you know leaving and resurrecting is a very common theme in paganism so we do have that in common with Christianity well yeah yeah now what you're saying basically is that Christianity has some essence of paganism within it. In at, at the same time, many Christians would say, "No, no, 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 no! How do, how did you get that? Well, we don't believe in paganism, idolatry at all." Well, if you see it and you worship it, if you can think about it in in any shape or form, let, let's look at all the senses that we have: seeing, hearing, tasting, feeling, smelling imagining all of that thing if you can do that it ain't god as simple as that because nothing in the creation can be the creator that is crystal clear that allah existed before the creation before he created any of this whole universe or its black holes or anything like that all of it all of it was something that he came up with and I, I I started to point at my head but that that doesn't work because you can't compare even like say uh, thinking no you can't do that because Allah is not compared to your thinking not compared to he sees but you can't compare it to your eyesight you just look straight ahead you have to turn your head to, to, but he sees everything everywhere all the time and we can't imagine that he hears everything everywhere all the time and we can't imagine that and we're only concerned with our little area that we live in what about the whole entire globe? What about the whole solar system, the sun and all the planets? What about the Milky Way? Wow. What about the other Milky Ways? What about the whole entire universe? And we still don't really know how big it is. They're expanding our thinking about that on a daily basis. But really, Allah, he knows what he created. And I challenge you, I really challenge you to find another place in the universe that has a place that you could really go to and say, okay, I'll just live over here for a while. Because if that was true, 
then you could easily disprove everything that I just said because you could say, well, how come God didn't tell us about this? Because everything else, you can find evidence for it, but no evidence for traveling to and existing on another planet. But Allah does tell us about breaking through the atmosphere, and you will never do that except Illa B. Sultan with a great power and authority. And we did that with a great power and authority in the early 60s, and I was there because we worked on the, the NASA there in Houston together, and we saw it, boom, go up. I saw it on TV, but anyway, because <laughs> it was in Florida, but we worked on it there in, the, in Houston. Anyway, so I think that this is a, a good example of the idea behind another question that why are we here? Have you heard this question before, sister? Yes, I have heard this question before. So what is our purpose? Why do we have to be here? Why do we have to go through all this? Hey, I'm a nice guy. Well, just put me in the heaven. Ah, why do I have to endure all of this commotion? Why do I have to put up with that? Good question? It is a good question, yes. Before we answer it, we should probably look at taking a break. Ah, and this will give everybody a chance to share this right now. Because when we come back, inshallah, God willing, the creeks don't rise. I would love for us to talk about the answer to our real purpose here on this planet and why it's necessary for us to endeavor to go through all of this and not ever give up. Okay, so everybody, we're going to put up a little thing about our satellite and then how you can join us to be our Dawa partner but then we'll be right back with more so share 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 if you care you share and stay tuned and stay guided with guide us tv guide us tv watched by many loved by all new muslims young muslims born muslims non-muslims all enjoy it guide us tv never ads always free let's keep it free no ads. Support and share. And get guided with Guide Us TV. This is Yusuf Estes, and I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want Dawa partners. And you can be my Dawa partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to DawaPartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them, or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our Dawa partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming Dawa partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a Dawa partner. Do it now. Click. Click, click, click. Hey, and we are back. Masha Allah, Masha Allah. And we have a caller. Well, we were on the break. Somebody called in. And I hope you shared all of this. Okay. So we have Brother Rahan. Is, did I pronounce your name right? Yeah. Okay. He's in Tacoma, Washington. And do you have a, a question or a, a something for us today? So I have my question is about uh, me myself. Um, uh, I'm you know I'm from originally from uh, northern Iraq. Okay. And my friend he's from uh, uh, originally he's from Saudi Arabia, from Riyadh. Um, so we always talk about you know he he's worried about me if I die, I won't be I I won't die as a pure Muslim because I, I'm not following the the Shia faith or the Shia matter and. Is there a big difference between the Shia and Sunnah? 
Well, uh, first of all, before uh, we get into uh, all of the, and uh, as I explained on the, while well, we were coming back on the air, we don't like to get, to cause separation for the Muslims, all right? So, before we get into Sufi, Shiite, uh, Sunni, Guni, anything else, I just like to mention this. Okay. From the Quran, from the Quran, Alaysalahu okay. al Hakimin. What does that mean? Uh, say that again. Alaysalahu biyakham al Hakimin. Alaysalahu biyakham al Hakimin. Allahu Akbar. Sanzu Akshif. What does it mean? You're Arab. You know the meaning of what I just said. Yes. What is pure, it? Pure Arab, uh, that is Ibrahim. the end of Surah Atin. Atini was a tune waturi sini in Wahhabil Alameen. Okay? So, yeah, so at the end of it, it says, Isn't Allah the best of judges? Let Allah be the judge, and I'm not the judge. We have another caller. Can I go ahead and take it, brother? Thank okay, thank you. All right. Uh, wa alaikum salam, rahmatullahi barakatuh, rakan. Mashallah. I really appreciated his attitude. That is very nice. He said he is best friends with somebody from a, a he's in one part of Islam and there's somebody else in another part. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. When we start dividing up, and you're saying, oh, this guy is going to go to hell, and I'm not, or that guy, or that lady, or this and that. And how are you any different from the other religions that divide up? How are you different from the Catholics and the Protestants? How are you different from the Reformed Jews and the Hasidic Jews? How are you different from any other groups on earth that claim to be worshiping God, but in reality they're worshiping the group that they're with? How? And if you said, well, I just want to be one who serves God on his terms, got it, that's it, <laughs> you got it. It doesn't matter what you call yourself. It matters where your heart is and what you're doing about what you're feeling. So if you really believe in God, then put your effort to serve Him and not serve mammon. That's in the Bible. Don't serve what God created. Don't serve the universe itself, but the one who created it. Now, you can be a good custodian. We have a phone call. Uh, we have I mean, a phone let's call. take this call. Salam alaikum. Oh, I forgot to push the buttons. Okay, I pushed the buttons. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Mashallah. Uh, and who, who am I talking to? Jamal, is that what you said? Yes. Jamal, where are you calling from? Kentucky. Kentucky? Yes. MashaAllah, Jamal in Kentucky. Do you have a question or an idea for us? I've got a question. Okay. Some people say the credit card is haram how about this. Uh, okay, say it slower because I didn't understand what you said. I have you on speakerphone. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Some people say the credit card is haram. Can you explain about it, please? Okay, well, let me ask you this question. What is the credit card going to be used for? And how is it going to be paid back? Because a credit card uh, in and of itself... I have one right here. This is a credit card right here. It looks like a Visa card. Okay, and it and it's issued by the Chase Bank. All right. Anyway, so 
uh, is it haram? Is the card haram or is it the method of payment that you have? Is that, is that a better question? How do you pay your bills? So, here, here is a thing. So, as I think by myself, if I pay it on time, I don't spend my money on haram thing. I don't think it is haram. But some people say uh, credit card at all is haram. I don't know how they say that. That's why I, I get a question. The, okay, the, I, the, question, the question itself is the card haram. The card itself, the piece of plastic is not what's haram. It's the method of payment that is haram. Uh, if, if the, now, the reason that some people can say that the, the method of payment, regardless of how you do it, is haram, they have a point because when you sign the document, it says if you don't pay on time, you will pay interest. And they're saying you're agreeing to interest because nobody knows if they'll be able to pay it on time. However, however, if a person does not pay the interest and they just pay the principal, that's according to the natural transactions in any kind of a business. If somebody said, okay, I want you to pay uh, so much money for the car, but you can expect to pay me $400 a month for the car. And if you don't pay on time, I'm going to charge you $401. That $1 is haram, 100% haram. However, however, if you always paid it on time, then it would not occur that that this uh, or, or what is that word I'm looking for anyway that it would not add on that uh, that dollar or hundred dollars or whatever it might be the idea is you cannot pay out over a period of time more money than whatever the item is today let's say that the item is ten thousand dollars but you can pay it out a thousand dollars a year for a, a ten years. Okay, that's that's no problem, as long as you don't pay ten thousand and one dollars. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, but the idea that 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 it could be haram is coming from the signing of the document that says they can add in there and you're giving them permission to add in. And that's where they get the idea that it could be haram. But however, the Prophet wasalam, warned us that in the last days that riba or interest or usury will touch everybody. So yeah, we already know that because a dollar bill, when you hold it in your hand, I don't know if you've ever noticed it. Uh, do you have a dollar bill? Could you pull it out and then look at it? I don't have a dollar bill here. I haven't had one in a long time, but <laughs> if this is pandemic, I don't need it. But if you if you look at a dollar bill, what does it say right across the top of it? Do you have a dollar bill? Uh, I don't have a dollar bill. Okay. Uh, uh, then I'll, I, I, okay, let me see if I can put one up on the screen right now. Uh, U.S dollar bill let me see if I can pull it up I'll see if I can get an image okay. of it uh, okay okay there it is there is a dollar bill it says right on it it is a Federal Reserve note. And if you expand it up a, a little bit, you'll find out that it says in the upper left-hand corner of it that it is legal tender. It says, I'm going to see if I can put it up bigger. Yeah. It said this note, a, a note is a debt, by the way. This Note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what that's telling you is that this note 
is a debt owed to the Federal Reserve. It's evidence of a debt owed to the Federal Reserve. So anybody that has a dollar already has something with it usually already on it. And we're paying, I think, uh, around 3% a year uh, the government is paying to the Federal Reserve for those notes. Did you know that? I, didn't, I never know this. <laughs> I, I hear the first time. Well, I'm not joking. Uh, uh, my father used to lecture about this. But let me show you uh, on the screen. Uh, are you watching uh, your TV or on, on a phone or something so you can see what I'm doing? Yeah, I can see it on my phone. All right. Let's see if we can put this up. I don't know what year this is. Uh... I, I don't really, I, even though I enlarged it, I cannot see exactly what it says. Uh, it, it, at the bottom of it, you can see it says, we'll pay to the bearer on demand. And that means that it is an old note. It says, um, this, yeah. This is the full statement, although I still can't read it. Let me see if I can make it one time a little bit bigger. I know you guys can read it, but I can't. Let's... We can't read it because the phone number is covering it. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can put it up like this. Okay. It says, we'll pay to the bearer on demand one dollar. And what does that mean? Okay, now, that means that it, $1 is mentioned in this note, but all money, according to the United States Constitution, has to be gold or silver. And so it used to say on it that it is redeemable in lawful money. Let me see if I can put that up there where you can read it. It's redeemable. It says this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, and is redeemable in lawful money at any Federal Reserve Bank. That's what it's supposed to say on it. I don't know what it said, but I couldn't read it. But that is what they used to say on all of them. And one of the bills that... Uh, let me see if I can put this up. Ah, there you go. This is, uh, now I can read this one. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, comma, and is re redeemable in lawful money at the United States Treasury or any Federal Reserve Bank. And that was on a $10,000 bill, by the way. Let me put that up so you can see it. <laughs> we used to have ten thousand dollar bills, yeah, and that was uh, when uh, that was when nine. people used to work for a dollar a day. <laughs> and today, today they get fifteen dollars an hour or something like that, and we only have a hundred dollar bill. Yeah, that's controlling the legal tender. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't want to get into all of that because uh, this is, you know, it's their way it's of having fun with what they do. So I'll do love for everything. The, the point that we're trying to make, though, is that even the dollar bill itself is something that you could say is haram. You could either, you could say that any money out there is haram because it is always subject to change in value. And that's what the problem is. You're giving more value to something. Now, what about the guy who signs up to pay for, let's say, uh, a piece of real estate? Now, the piece of real estate is $100,000, okay? And you sign up and you're going to pay for it in 10 years. But 10 years down the road, that property is worth a half a million dollars. Now, who lost? Who lost? or who gained. And that is that is another subject for another time. But you can see that, uh, that, that no matter how you look at it, that somebody could get 
hooked <laughs> really bad. Yeah, that's right. All right. Okay. So that's uh, that's our thing about money today. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for your call. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. All right. Uh, so uh, we had uh, our brother just now asking about credit cards. Are they halal or haram? And the usage of most people, it would be haram because they pay the interest, usury or riba. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah number 2, verse uh, 274, 76, I think it is, that Allah is saying that, that it is definitely haram. He's telling you that Allah and his messenger declare war on the one who deals in this usury, this riba. So give it up. Don't do it. Don't do it at all. And uh, get by with whatever Allah gives you and don't try to show off and don't try to be something you're not and Allah will reward you on the day of judgment for living up to this. Anyway, sister, you any comments from you? Only that it's very difficult to live in this world without credit cards these days. I uh, I didn't have a credit card for 20 years. And one of the car rental places that I have to utilize in a couple of months, um, they only take credit cards. You can't use a debit card. You can't use cash. That, you can't uh, use sister, cash. that has been going on for a long time. That uh, I ran into that problem 20 years ago, more longer than that. And I wanted to, to rent a car, and they said, no, no cash. And I said, well, I used to, uh, uh, my credit score was really this or that. And they said, well, <laughs> yeah, well, it's no good now. And that's true, because when I stopped, when I came into Islam, I stopped all credit everything and I didn't uh, for the last almost 30 years 30 years it's over 30 years now that I have not had any credit at all well according to this world uh, you're a loser <laughs> according to the next world I give up all of that so that I could be a winner makes sense makes sense Anyway, but yeah, I had to get a credit card and I've got it all set up. I've got the cash set aside after I make my charge. Boom, I'm going to pay it off and then I'm going to cut it up and get rid of it. Well, uh, you know, you can uh, you can keep the card and and if you have a, something that comes up like that again, you could use it. But if you think that the temptation would be too great, then you could cut it up and throw it away. But uh Actually, if you keep it going, then it's up to you. But uh, I don't know. I really, I can't advise anybody about that. Because uh, in most cases, it's better not to have the credit. But in, in this world, in the United States of America, if you don't have credit, you aren't anybody. They're, they're right. not going to listen to you. I found something here. I'm, I'm going to put it up. <laughs> I found something here. Uh, I think it's just funny. Uh, uh, okay, here's here's. Uh, <laughs> I think it's I think it's uh, Jefferson. Is it maybe? <laughs> He's got <laughs> protection against the COVID. <laughs> He's not on your screen yet. <laughs> Oh man, this is funny. Oh, there it is. That's um, Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Benjamin. Oh, that's a hundred dollar bill, then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have been so long since I saw one. I didn't know whose pictures on it. <laughs> oh, the Lord, oh, the Lord. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So. I, the idea behind what we're talking about uh, 
sister, is, and for all of those at home, that if you follow Allah's rules and stick to that, then inshallah, Allah will reward you immensely. Now, sometimes it is too difficult for you. And if, you, if you're under that kind of pressure, for instance, and this is known, this is known in the United States, that many times a brother or sister who has children, let's say you have five or six children, and plus you and your husband are going to be, uh, you know, seven or eight people, and they're not going to let you stay in an apartment. They're saying, nope, nope, four is the limit, or three is the limit. And you're like, well, well, I got twice that many, more than that. You know, sometimes nine, 10, 12 uh, people living in your house. If you've got your mom with you and your kids and your uh, husband or wife, it, it can add up to nine, 10, 12 people real fast. So what can you do? And that's where people wind up trying to buy a house but they don't have the cash to buy it. So what can they do? Uh, and that's when they go to look for halal money. And then they run into the problem that it costs more to get the halal loan than it does to get the haram loan. And then you start thinking, well, wait a minute. How come the, the halal is costing me more than the haram and how does that work? And that's when they bring in the scholars to try to explain it to you. And uh, I don't like to get into that, and I avoided that all this time, and I'm not going to do it now. But it, whatever your choice is, it's not going to be easy. But the bottom line is this. If what you're doing is a necessity, and we started the program out with that, if you've got Dorora, something that it's just a big burden on you and it's necessary for you to kind of get it off of your shoulders, then in this case, the only thing that you cannot do is worship other than the law. That, no. And I'll share with you something that happened at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of his companions witnessed his mother and father being killed his mother was killed first, and then his father was killed. And both of them because they wanted to hold on to Islam, and they wouldn't give it up. And he witnessed that. And then the people started pressuring him and, and uh, you know, torturing him. And he said, I can't take it anymore. And he denied the Prophet Islam. They said, just say that, that Muhammad is not a prophet. Something like this, you know, I'm translating. And uh, he said it. And then when he went to the masjid, the next time he sat off by himself. He didn't go over and join with the Muslims. He sat by himself. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked somebody to go over to him and ask him, why are you sitting over there? And he came back and he said, well, this is what his case is, that he said that you were not the Prophet and he didn't want to come over there. And uh, he said, go back and ask him what was in his heart at the time. And then he went back over and asked him. And then he came back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and he said, okay. He said that it never changed his heart at all. But he just couldn't take the pressure, you know, he was uh, being tortured. And so listen to this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you go back and tell him, if they do that to you again, say it again. Because that is different than saying that Allah is not your God. We have a phone call. And they're telling us now that it is time to wrap all of this up. So that's a good place for us to take this chance to say, Allah Alam, He knows all. And if you didn't share this yet, Please share it right now. Sister, tell everybody what to do. Make sure that you stay tuned and stay guided.
with Gaidas TV. Mashallah, mashallah. Gaidas TV, watched by many, loved by all. New Muslims, young Muslims, born Muslims, non Muslims, all enjoy it. Gaidas TV never adds, always free. Let's keep it free, no ads. Support and share, and get guided with Gaidas TV. Yusuf asked this, and I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want Dawa partners, and you can be my Dawa partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to dawapartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them, or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our dawah partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming dawah partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a Dawah partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click.